2020 version of the Triumph Tiger 900 is the biggest change the model has seen since its reintroduction into the range in 800cc form. In a search to make the bike more rugged and adventure oriented, Triumph has developed a radical new engine they are calling the T-Plane engine. The idea is to create a Tiger with less tendency to spin and more inclination to dig in and go. With the new bike putting out the same 94 horsepower as the previous 800cc Triumph Tiger, it'd be easy to surmise that the T-Plane crank has failed as a new unit. More capacity equals more power, right? Wrong. The increase in capacity is more to do with preventing the new unit from losing out in the battle with Euro emissions regulations. Where this engine gets really clever is in how it makes its power, where the torque is and where it sits in the rev range and also how it's delivered. To get the desired result, Triumph chucked out the old engine's architecture, which had its crank pin set at an equal 120 degrees. In that layout, the engine delivered a silky smooth flow of torque, thanks to the equally spaced pulses from the engine. Moving away from that, Triumph installed the crank pins of the new engine at zero degrees, 90 degrees, and then 180 degrees. This configuration combined with the Triumph's 132 firing order gives the bike an uneven delivery, with two short gaps between the first two firing pulses and then a longer gap before the third one arrives. On the launch of the new bike on the roads across Morocco, the new engine felt immediately torquier than the previous unit. But then with 10% more mid-range on offer, that would be expected. But the torque curve of this bike is only half the story. Riding on the tarmac on day one, I found the engine to have a split personality, which meant below 4000 RPM, you had the feel, delivery and almost the sound of a big V-twin. And when you went above 4000 RPM, the engine came alive, reverting back to the feeling of a three cylinder, albeit a slightly vibey one. At this point, we'd done zero off road riding, and to be honest, I could take or leave the new engine. Sure enough, the extra mid range was nice, but the extra vibes that came with it didn't seem like a price worth paying. At the end of the day, I remember reflecting that the vibes weren't worse than any big adventure bike. It's just that in this case, I was always comparing this machine to the Tiger 800, which was as smooth as silk in comparison. By the end of day one and after riding 150 miles on road, I'd learned all that I needed to know about the engine. Or so I thought. With day two came the riding day that we'd all been waiting for, a full day of riding the trails, the dunes, and even the beach around Osawara in Western Morocco. I tried to put the previous day's slog across North Africa behind me as we set off to the first photo stop, which turned out to be only a couple of miles from the hotel we were staying at. It must have taken me all of about 100 meters of riding on the dirt for the new engine and that quirky layout to make total sense. The T-Plane engine is an engine that is built to plug mud. Where the old generation Tiger 800 was all fizzy top end and spinning the back wheel from pretty much any revs, the new engine's offbeat character digs in, allowing the chunky Pirelli and Scorpion rally tyres that we were using to find some traction in the soft sand and dirt. And don't think that that means that the Tiger has lost any of its tail happy fondness. Get the revs up above 4000 RPM and the, with the traction control turned off, it'll happily slide around like a dirty great enduro bike. The two engines in one concept is a very clever little trick and it's one that I don't think any manufacturer has ever pulled off so convincingly before. If you're a fan of the old Tiger 800, definitely give the new 900 a go, but please do so with an open mind. This Tiger has a totally different temperament to the old one. <laughs> 